In this video, you're gonna learn how to confidently flirt with women using my 10 tested tips, even if you're an introvert. Your dating life changes now. I'm dating coach and best-selling author, Connell Barrett, the real life hitch. I help men attract women by being authentic. No creepy pickup artist tricks needed. And today, I'm about to give you my secret flirting formula to make you magnetic to women. Then, I'm gonna share 10 tested flirting tips that you can use immediately so that you can stop running out of things to say and start attracting cool, cute girls. So here's my question for you. Do you ever struggle with what to say and how to flirt? Have you ever gotten stuck in the friend zone? Well, here is the secret flirting formula that ignites attraction in women. Drum roll please, here it is. It's called man to woman communication. What is that? It's a turbocharged form of flirting that amplifies romantic connection. How does man to woman communication work? Well, here was my aha moment many, many years ago. Long time ago, I was struggling with flirting. I got stuck in my head. I got stuck in the friend zone on date after date after date. I just kept hearing, Connell, you're a nice guy, you're funny, but just not feeling the sparks. That was so frustrating to me. Then one night, I had a first date with Amanda, a gorgeous, cool woman, a pastry chef who looked like Jennifer Lawrence. And I said, okay, this first date is gonna be different because I was, I was experimenting with what's called man-to-woman communication. I decided I'm gonna flirt, I'm gonna be bold, I'm gonna be compelling, but I'm gonna be authentic. I'm really gonna take some chances, but I'm gonna do it as me. Amanda walks in, sits down next to me, and I gently tease her for running a little late. I say, hey, you owe me a drink for every minute you were late, so uh, looks like I'm getting trashed. And she laughed. Um, after a little bit, we did some playful, playful games, some thumb wrestling, we did a staring contest. Uh, at one point, she looked down at my shirt, and she was kinda noticing my shirt, and I said, uh, excuse me, my eyes are up here. Please stop objectifying me, okay? I'm not a piece of meat. She giggled. She called me a smart ass. And that's really the authentic me. I'm a natural born smart ass. So she was liking the real me. But it wasn't all teasing, okay? We also got real. We got vulnerable. I confessed to how nervous I was. I told her she had a sexy laugh, which scared me to say that, but she liked it. Pretty soon she was holding my we were holding hands and she had thrown a leg over my leg. Then she said, Hey, I need to change seats. And she got up and she sat in my lap and we started kissing, making out. And all of the eyes on the bar were looking at us, basically saying, hey guys, get a room. And this is 45 minutes into our very first date. And then while she was sitting on my lap later, um, she, she asked me out for the second date. And she suggested our second date be a couple's massage, where after we had our double massage, we'd have the room to ourselves so we could, in her words, have some fun. So I walked home that night after that first date and I thought, wow, that's how you do it. That's how you flirt with women and make sparks fly. Man to woman communication. And I have never been friend zoned since. When sparks fly between two people, it can seem random. Like it just happens, sort of like lightning striking. But the truth is you can learn to consistently ignite that romantic connection using what's called man to woman communication the fun, flirty, authentic frequency that amplifies natural chemistry. And this secret weapon isn't just for dates. It's the lens I want you to use with all of your female conversations with women you're attracted to, texting, approaching, talking to a girl at a party. You can use it all the time, anywhere, everywhere. So let's break down the art of man-to-woman communication. And then I'm gonna share with you 10 practical ways you can use right now, today, to use this flirting method to start making sparks fly. So let's do it. Here's a thought experiment. Imagine you're on a first date with a classy, gorgeous woman, but it's going nowhere fast. It's safe, platonic. You ask boring informational questions like, eh, where'd you go to school? How long have you worked at your job? You don't know what to say. You don't know how to flirt. You don't try to kiss her. And then the next day she texts you, hey, you're a nice guy, but I just didn't feel those sparks. Let's be friends. Ah, <sighs> sucks. Now, imagine you're on a date with that same woman, but this time the air is electric. She twirls her hair, she touches your arm, you start to feel magnetic. You compliment her, you tease her, you get bolder and more vulnerable. Most importantly, you're very authentic and playful with her. You're 
having a fun, playful time. And later on in the date, you boldly go for that kiss and start making out. And then the next day, she texts you, last night was amazing. When do I get to see you again? Winky face. So the difference between those two scenes, in the first one, you played it safe. You treated her like a friend. In the second scenario, you connected on the man to woman wavelength. Basically, you used your secret flirting weapon, man to woman communication. So here's the aha moment I want you to have right now. Women don't put us in the friend zone. We do it to ourselves. Men do it to ourselves. How? By treating women like a buddy, like a friend, not a potential lover. I want you to see the matrix of social interactions. You see, all social interactions have a particular social frame. Every interaction you have with others, not counting family members, falls into one of three frames or categories. Number one is friend to friend, a purely platonic vibe, no romantic subtext, basically your friends and acquaintances. Number two is professional slash business, the way you relate to colleagues, to clients, employees at a store or a restaurant at shops, that's number two. And number three is man to woman communication, a romantic context where your masculine side comes out, you're flirtatious, and that activates her feminine side and she gets attracted to you. So every encounter you have with a woman will fall into one of these three social frames. It's almost like clicking a remote control to one of only three TV channels. So your dating problems happen with flirting or lack thereof when you inadvertently click to that friend to friend or that business like channel rather than flipping to man to woman. So a girl might find you attractive, but if your vibe with her is too safe, too timid, too friend to friend, she may feel nice guy, but I don't feel the sparks. That don't impress me much. Hello friend zone. And if you don't know what to say or how to flirt, then you're basically automatically putting yourself in that friend zone and you don't even realize it. I know this because I lived in the friend zone for years. I owned real estate there. So here are the three pillars of man to woman communication. Here are the three big things you need to know. Number one, the first rule is show clear romantic interest. Make sure your words and actions let her know you're interested. She needs to know that this is the story of boy meets girl, not friend meets friend. The second pillar of man to woman is communicate emotionally not logically. Most men communicate in a logical, analytical way, in general, in life. And this is great at a business lunch. It's death on a date. Man to woman is an emotional, fun, playful vibe, not logical and informational. You want to filter your language through an emotional lens, not a logical one. In other words, be Captain Kirk, don't be Mr. Spock. Oh, you are trying to seduce me. Uh, and the third pillar of Amanda Woman is speak your authentic thoughts. Women like you for you. Share your true, honest self with her. What's more authentic than saying to your crush, hey, I like you. I want to go on a date with you. Now you're being clear. Okay, quick tip. The reason you think you run out of things to say with women is because you believe you need to have great lines or amazing content. You don't. No. What you need is to share your authentic self in a clear way. So stop thinking, what's the right thing to say? and start thinking, what's a true feeling I can share with her? If you're trying to come up with great content, you'll get stuck in your head. If you just literally speak your thoughts, what I'm thinking and feeling is what I'm saying and doing authentically, you'll always have something to say. So let's go back to my date with Amanda. Uh, sparks flew with Amanda that night because I let my authentic, smart ass side come out while also telling her, honestly, vulnerably, I thought she was cool, thought she was sexy. And I also played with her. We had fun. I was being man to woman and she finally said, oh God, finally a guy who's into, the, into fun, into being real, making me feel sexy and, and, and letting me be myself. That's why she sat on my lap and made out with me in less than an hour. Not because I'm great looking, not because of magical lines, but because of man to woman communication. So now I wanna help you turn that dial, that man to, turn to that man to woman channel, which is kind of like going from PBS to uh, Fifty Shades of Grey, <laughs> okay? Uh, now you might be asking, uh, well, how much do I do this on a date? How much do I flirt? I have a philosophy called the 80-20 rule. When you're on a date or in a conversation with a woman you're attracted to, 80% of your communication should be what's called baseline, sincere, authentic, normal. 20% of your communication is emotional spikes, compliments, flirty comments, physical touch, eye contact, 
teasing her, cracking jokes, just being playful. So don't listen to those pickup dudes here on YouTube who fill your head with 77 tactics and fancy moves. You don't need all this game. Follow the 80-20 rule. Basically, 80% of your time is in baseline, normal, sincere communication. Just being genuine, like I'm being right now, and 20% are fun, little emotional spikes. To find the right balance here, think of an EKG heartbeat monitor. That baseline that runs horizontally, that represents normal conversation. Just you being sincere and real. This should be 80% of what you say to women. About 20% can be the peaks and valleys of those emotional spikes. So mostly, you're just being normal, sincere, and authentic, but every so often, you throw in a tease, or a joke, or a compliment, or a fun move. You're about to learn 10 of them, and that's what keeps it fun and enjoyable for her. So here's what a friend zone date looks like. Here's a flatlining EKG that's all baseline. This is what a boring, logical friend zone conversation looks like. Get the crash pads, stat. This is an interaction where the date doesn't go anywhere. Here's what a man to woman date looks like. Look at this, it's mostly baseline, but see how we have those fun man to woman spikes. And it's these spikes that make things really compelling for your date, while also making her look at you as this normal, relatable guy. You're not gamey, you're being genuine and real, but man, you're good at flirting. So here's an audio from an actual first date I had with Bethany. It was a video date. So watch this and listen. This short little snippet, you'll notice it's mostly normal baseline conversation, but notice how I give her two or three little emotional spikes. One is a compliment, and uh, one or two are teases. So check this out. Ooh, what are your favorite, let me see, Italian spots in the city? Uh, I like a place, it's not there anymore, it's called Beppo. I think it's gone, but it was called Beppo. Oh, Lupa, no, sorry, Lupa. Lupa, it means wolf. That was a great place, but that's gone. What language is that, Lupa? Lupa is, it's probably Italian. Probably, should be, right? You know, Considering it's, it's Italian. <laughs> Italian, Italian restaurant, Italian name. You have, right. you have heard of Italian, right? You, you know, know, Italy, the you country. Do know that's a, you do know that's a language? Mm -hmm. Yep, got you do, it. You do, know, you do know that Europe is, exists, right? <laughs> All the way on the other side of the world, yep. <laughs> <laughs> no, Lupa's a great restaurant. Are you? Do you think of yourself as like a foodie? Are you into like exploring oh, new restaurants? Oh, for sure. I'm like, I'm always trying to find like new places to eat, but I'm always like the first person to like snap a photo for Instagram. You know, got to get it for the gram before anyone can touch the food. Okay. So. That makes sense. But then you can actually chill back and enjoy the food, enjoy the dinner. Oh, yeah, for sure. See how simple that was? I was just being myself and I threw in these fun little spikes. 80% Connell, 20% flirty. Um, let's get you the kind of dating results that I've been talking about and that my clients get. So here, let's do it. I want to share with you now 10 simple ways for you to be man to a woman. Here we go. Man to woman move number one, give her a sexy compliment early in the conversation. In other words, find a trait that you like about her that's not about her looks and tell her that you find that trait sexy. Her laugh, her wit, her sense of humor. It's going to sound something like this. Check out another audio of me from my date. For okay, sure. so if you if you could only go to one restaurant, if you're gonna leave New York City and never come back, what would be your last meal? Where would that be? Oh my gosh, that's super hard. Um, there's this spot, it's French. I know we're talking about Italian, but we're gonna go to a different country. Hmm. There's a spot downtown in the meatpacking district called Pasties. Okay. And I love their steak and fries. I love their brunch. They have like <clears throat> everything on the menu that you could ask for. Their desserts are insane. So I think if I had to pick a restaurant, that would be the one. Interesting. So you've never heard of Italy, but you know about France. You're, <laughs> I know about France. Yes. You're either you're either the weirdest girl I've had a phone date with, or the coolest girl. I can't figure out which one it is. You know, maybe one day you could quiz me on the capitals of the countries <laughs> also. Mm -hmm. Again, simple, right? Let other guys tell her that her body is sexy. You're that rare man who sees her, her inner beauty. Women love that. On my first date with my now girlfriend, Jess, I said to her, you know what's really sexy about you? It's your wit. You're so quick-witted. I'm just trying to keep up with you. And she later told me that she swooned inside 
because a lot of guys have fawned over her looks, but I was finding that true authentic side of Jess sexy. And that elevated me to the top 1% of men, basically. Man to woman move number two, talk the talk. The way you use your voice conveys your confidence level. So cultivate a rich, resonant vocal tonality. Record conversations with a friend and listen to your voice for things like up talking, where you sound like you're asking questions. You wanna remove lots of ums and uhs from your conversation. And another drill you can do or a tip when you're talking to a woman or talking to people in general, imagine there's someone behind them and talk loudly enough so that the person on the other side of them can hear you. Because when you get nervous or insecure, your voice is the first thing to go. Women notice that and they're not attracted to it. So cultivate a good vocal tonality. Think of a continuum of vo vocal tonality from supplicating to neutral to commanding. You wanna be somewhere between neutral and commanding, but with a big smile on your face. So there's a positivity to it. Basically, you wanna sound like I sound right now. Okay, um, by the way, this tonality, there's something about vocal tonality that women just love. So look for that sweet spot between commanding and neutral, and that's the sweet spot that makes her say, wow, this guy really believes in himself. Man to woman move number three, when you approach her, look her in the eye. I once dated a woman named Nicole, and I approached her at a Whole Foods one day, and on our first date, I asked her what she liked about my approach. I was thinking, my ego thought she was gonna say, oh, I liked your smooth pickup line, but women rarely remember what you say for that, for that opening line. She said, oh, that's easy. You look me in the eye, and that told me how confident you were. So look a woman in the eye. Man to woman move number four. On a date, look at her like she's dessert. I was once on a first date with a woman in Santa Monica. We had drinks on a patio bar near my hotel. And we were both feeling the sexual tension rising, and I let that feeling inform me. And I was just looking at her with wolfish, desirous eye contact. It was genuine. Again, it was authentic. And she said, wow, you're looking at me like I'm dessert. So my attraction for her was coming out in my eyes. And this was the one time in my entire dating history, as we were walking back to my place, in this case, it was a hotel, she was actually unbuttoning her clothes before we got in my hotel room, in the hallway of the hotel. I'm not saying that to brag, I'm just letting you know the power of when you're man to woman and the power of looking at a woman with true romantic intent. So as a date goes on, feel free to look at her like she's dessert. She's gonna feel that and she might get very attracted to that and start looking at you like you're, like you're dessert. Man to woman move number five. Show her that her beauty is distracting you. It's affecting you. It's really basic to just say to a woman, hey, you're hot. That's what cat callers do. We don't wanna be like that. We wanna be classy, we wanna be charming. So here's what you might do. You might let her know her beauty's affecting you by saying, I'm sorry, what'd you say? Your lips were distracting me. Or that dress is very, uh, wow. Uh, repeat that please. Or I once said to a woman, hey, you're, you're making it really tough for me to clink theory right now. Let's check out a quick video clip from master flirter Craig Ferguson from his old talk show. Check him out here with actress Alice Eve and notice how he lets her body and dress distract him from the conversation with her and how he tells her her dress is very distracting. Let's check it out. Yep, you passed. You see, you continue to honor the show. The I have to say, that's a very distracting dress. Sorry. It's all right. Actually, the dress is fine. It's, it's, I'm just having a very hard time. Is that a tattoo? Yeah, I've got, I've got a lot of them, yeah. Do you think, I've got a lot of time. This goes all the way up round and bow. You, you, yeah. Go on, follow the snake. <laughs> Go on, Alice, down there, go what on. What are you gonna do? As a member of the non-tattooed community, I find tattoos fascinating. Really? Yeah. Are you interested in getting one? No. Really, why? Why do you hate America? <laughs> <laughs> they, are, they are very uh, closely linked to America. A lot of Americans no. have them. I don't dislike them, I just don't know if I want one on myself. No, you probably, you, I mean, you're pretty good as you are, I have to be honest. You're, I just would regret it, I think. Well, regret's part of life. It I, is, it yeah, is. Yeah, it's all right. Je ne regret. Uh, Je ne regret rien. There you go. No. Can I just ask you something? The next yes. time you want the bell, just ask I'll bring it over. Don't lean over the desk. Because... <laughs> I'm not... 
Don't get mad at me. I'm not trying to. I'm just saying. That... I think it takes more than that to make me mad. Wasn't that great? He doesn't say anything vulgar. He's not using crass comments. He's being a charming gentleman. Here's Craig again, combining playfulness with again being distracted, this time by the amazing, the beautiful Kate Mara. Check this out. <laughs> or is it? Uh, no, I find it very difficult to talk to you. <laughs> is it the shoulder? No, it's not the shoulder. Well, the shoulder's part of it. What's the other part? All the other parts. <laughs> Blushing a little bit. No, you're not. <laughs> Blushing on the side. No, 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 you're not. No. How do you know I'm not? Because I know you and you don't blush. Did you notice how Craig's comment about her shoulder made her get all flustered? And look, you can't make that chemistry up. It's real. So don't fawn over women. Don't say, oh my God, your body looks amazing. Let her know how her looks are affecting you. Women love that. Man to woman move number six, tease her. Give her a light, playful tease. This is a great way to amplify attraction. And the, the move with teasing is you only want to tease a woman about things that are like surface level things. You know, her hobbies, her taste in music. Don't tease about things that go deeper. Don't tease about her weight, her looks. I had a former client who once teased a woman about how much she was drinking on a date and accused her of being an alcoholic and she instantly ended the date. So don't tease about things that a woman can get upset about. Tease her about the fact that she loves Coldplay. <laughs> okay, that's how you tease women. You know how I know you're gay? Yeah. You like Coldplay. Man to woman move number seven, use the push pull. So I give pickup guys here on YouTube a lot of shit because they deserve it. They mostly suck at coaching. Um, but I do like one old school pickup move. It's called a push pull. Uh, teases and compliments are both effective flirting tools. A push pull combines one of each. Uh, the positive comment pulls her close to you while the, the tease playfully pushes her away. So again, a push is a playful showing of pretend disinterest. A pull is a compliment or showing interest. And a push pull is a light joking comment that blends both. And it works because the contrast of the positive and negative creates a compelling uh, emotional curiosity for her. Here are some examples of push pulls. These are just generic ones. You might say something like, you're either the coolest girl I've met in a while or the nerdiest. I'm just not sure which one. Or I was totally falling for you until you said blank comment. Another one would be, oh my God, you're so cute. You remind me just of my little sister. Uh, or you might say like, oh, we should totally go on a date. You promise you won't stalk me, right? So these are all examples of push pulls. Uh, let's go back to my phone video date with Bethany and uh, check this out. Notice how I give her a fun little push pull on this date. Ooh, you're into, oh wait, do you actually, are you into trivia, quiz stuff? Not, a, not at all. Oh, <laughs> I just, <laughs> I had not just. I would not be able to answer anything, <laughs> any of those questions. I was really into you for a second and then you lost me. Um, oh, I think I might need to block your number now. Oh crap! By the way, I, all jokes aside, you have a great laugh. You have a really attractive, great. Like, no, no, feminine. I hate my laugh. It's you horrible. have a really cute laugh. Don't let anybody tell you different, including you. Oh, thanks, thanks. I laugh like just a normal person. Play around with the push pull. It's one of my favorite, more advanced moves. Man to woman move number eight: be physically expressive. Break that touch barrier. You know, physical expressiveness is a simple, powerful way to create that man to woman vibe. So you can give her a high five, obviously hold her hand if you want to, tap her arm, you can whisper in her ear, brush her hair out of her eyes. Again, assuming that she's enjoying these things and that she's comfortable, you always wanna notice how a woman's feeling, make sure she's liking it and reciprocating a little bit, hopefully a lot, um, but it's okay to touch a woman, right? Uh, we're humans, we touch. Some women love physical touch and experience flirting that way. So feel free to be a little bit physically expressive early on a date and um, make sure she feels safe and comfortable, but it's okay to do it and see if she likes it. Here's a tip. Don't randomly touch a woman and just have no reason for it. The big secret to physical touch is make it an extension of your expression or have a reason for the touch. Because if you just touch a woman's on the arm or have your hand on her leg, She's gonna think that's weird as fuck. But if you have a reason for the touch, it makes sense to her. 
I was on a first date once with a woman who's a personal trainer. We were talking about how, what her fitness regimen is. And I just said, oh, let me feel your muscle. And you know, she, I felt her muscle. And uh, I got to touch her in a way that made sense to her. She felt my muscle or my lack of muscle. And all of a sudden, she and I were breaking that touch barrier 15 minutes into a date. And that made it so much easier later in the date for me to move in for that first kiss. So when you're gonna be physically expressive, have a purpose, have a reason for the touch. Maybe you are uh, examining her jewelry, or maybe you're like, oh, what a cool tattoo. Grab her arm gently. Oh, how did you choose this design? Have a reason for the touch, that makes it normal. Don't just touch her randomly, that's creepy and weird. One final note about touching, begin with small touches, early, taps, high fives. Uh, this lets her get comfortable with your touch, and you can tell whether or not she likes it. Uh, if she clearly doesn't like it, stop. Ew, get off of me. Uh, if you're not sure, also stop. If she likes it and touches you back, keep it going. Man to woman move number nine, make her the seducer. I love to misinterpret something a woman says to me as evidence that she wants to seduce me. A lot of women love this because by flipping the male-female dynamic and accusing her of objectifying you, you're actually telling her, I'm not like all those other guys. Um, also, it takes things from a logical kind of friend of friend zone to that man to woman zone if you misinterpret what she says as her trying to seduce you. So for example, a woman once said to me, oh yeah, I'm, uh, I'm redesigning my bedroom now. And I said, look, I know you're trying to get me in your bedroom, but if I barely know you, let's at least have a drink first before we even talk about me coming over. I was kidding, I was joking, but um, she laughed. But even though it was a joke, now I'm putting her in the frame of her chasing me a little bit, which is just a fresh, unusual thing that women aren't used to. So yeah, look for opportunities to say the kinds of things to women that women always hear from guys. But again, you're always doing it as a joke. You're not actually accusing her of trying to seduce you. Some examples might be, uh, excuse me, my eyes are up here. Or, hey, just so you know, I don't hold hands until the third date. Or you might say, you know, if she leans close to you, stop trying to kiss me. I'm a gentleman, I'm not a piece of meat. It's very fun. And sometimes this makes a woman chase you even more because they like to play that role of the aggressor because it's a game. It's a playful game. All right, saving the best for last. Man to woman move number 10, be playful. It's all about fun and play. Look, not every woman wants sexy talk or physical touch, at least not too soon but virtually every woman wants to have a fun, playful experience with a guy she just met. So other than being authentic, I think the most powerful tool in your man to woman toolbox is playfulness. Here's how you can do it, a few strategies. You can do staring contests. You can play two truths and a lie. Play, you know, teasing and joking is obviously playful. You might not have a six pack abs. I don't, <laughs> I've never had a six pack in my life, but you can hone a six pack sense of fun and playfulness. I think this is the essence of man to woman communication. Light, playful, and fun. Here's a way to do it, another way. You could do a fun little deal breaker on a date. A deal breaker is you take a little detail, she says, that you pretend not to like, and you tell her that's why you can't date her. So for example, she might say she's a cat person. You say, oh, sorry, this is not gonna work out. I can't, that's a deal breaker. I can't be with a woman who doesn't like dogs. Uh, obviously you hate dogs, you love cats. And she'll probably say something like, oh, no, no, I like dogs and cats too. And you're like, yeah, right. You're just saying that to get in my pants, probably. Um, I'm sorry, I just don't think it'll work. You know, I can't date a woman who owns a coat made of Dalmatians. <laughs> and then she'll be laughing and joking. Again, you're not, you're not literally letting her think that you don't want to date her. It's a role play. Keyword is play, right? So feel free to give her a fun deal breaker based on the band she likes that you hate or her favorite TV show that you think is lame or she's a cat person, you're a dog person, give her a fun little deal breaker. It's another example of that spike that makes a first date or a first conversation memorable and uh, make her feel really good. And these little challenges, these deal breakers can make a girl chase you a little bit and just get her more invested in winning you over. And here's a bonus tip, the 11th way you can be man to woman. Sort of a bonus tip. I love Spinal Tap. I love to take things all the way to 11. These go to 11. Be the buyer, not the seller. Men often try to sell themselves to women who they just met. And this can come across as making you look desperate. 
uh, or overly eager. So adopt a buyer-seller vibe, not a seller-buyer vibe. So imagine you went to Best Buy, right? You're shopping for a new TV. You don't try to convince the salesman that a certain model is right for you, and you don't try to impress him. You don't brag. You don't lean in and say, please sell me your TV. You screen him, and you screen the TV to find out if it's the right match for you. Similarly, on a date, or when you just met a woman, you can kind of screen her to find out if she meets your standards. Uh, this keeps you from coming across as, as overly eager, and it shows her that you're a selective person who has choices and options, and that just makes you more attractive. And it's a great vibe to put in place to create that man-to-woman energy. Because hey, a woman wants to be chosen by a cool, authentic, high-value guy just like you, uh, that just makes you more attractive and makes her more excited when you decide you want to see her again. So be the buyer, not the seller. Okay, that's the end for today's video, but we've got a lot more. In the next video, I'm gonna share with you some of the most common myths and traps that men fall into in the area of flirting. And you wanna make sure you're not doing these things and you wanna do the right things instead. So click the video on your screen and learn all about the biggest mistakes you don't wanna make in flirting. And by the way, if you want a lot more free tips or if you wanna get a free copy of my best-selling book, Dating Sucks But You Don't, all you gotta do is go to datingtransformation.com. I'll see you next time.